Hello everybody, some things came in this week, so let's go ahead and take a look at them. The case for the computer came in. As you can see, I picked up a Cooler Master. I decided on this one after looking at many, many cases on Amazon. And the reason I chose this one is it doesn't have a glass panel on the side. It has a lot of drive bays inside. And it's uh, some aspects of it are toolless. So that's nice for servicing the parts inside as well. Um, but it was really hard to find a case that didn't have a window on the side because so many of them do nowadays. Everybody, you know, wants that uh, light up LED fans and the glass to see your components inside. But I'm not going for that here. I want a lot of drive bays for hard drives and, and equipment and stuff. So this is the one I chose. So here's the front of the box um, side or whatever. So uh, enough of the box, I suppose, because I have it right here. And it's uh, very basic. So let me move it a little, a little more to the center here. So on the top we have a place for a radiator for your CPU. Looks like you could put one on the side here as well. I haven't read the manual, um, but obviously a fan could go here. On the front we have two um, CD, DVD drive bays. Of course, many other things can go in those as well. We also have one slot here if you wanted like a floppy drive or something of that same size. It comes with one fan in the front. Of course, you could install another one if you want. You have your reset, your power, audio in and out, USB 2.0, 3.0, and then a blank. And of course, Cooler Master. I just like the fact that it's so simple. That's what I'm looking for. I like that. On the other side, we have another spot for a radiator if you wanted to put it on the, the side here. And of course, let's take a look at the back. So we have another, of course, Cooler Master branded fan because it is their brand after all. Of course, you can put your motherboard up top and the power supply on the bottom. Um, I'm not sure when they started doing that, but of course, you know, back in the day, the power supply was always at the top. Doesn't really matter much to me, but they're just on the bottom now. So very nice there. Turn it around again. The other issue I've noticed with many cases nowadays when uh, building computers for people and modifying them and doing repairs and whatnot is these cases are getting cheaper and cheaper in quality. And they're so thin, they're like made out of aluminum foil. Well, this one, of course it's not the thickest one in the world. It's definitely thicker than many of the others um, that I've seen. So inside, of course, we have our fan. And we have a fan up front here too, there it is. We have some toolless designs here for the drives. I'm assuming if you wanna put drives here, you can either screw them in or get more of these devices online somewhere. Got a grate down here for the fan and the power supply. So yeah, very basic. I do believe on the back there is where you put your SSD. And I did get an SSD for this. I don't have it uh, with me at the very moment, uh, but I'll definitely share it with you. So yeah, that's the case. I'm real happy with it because it's basic and it gets the job done. So we'll start moving over components. One last look at the inside of the old case here before we move everything over to the new one. I think, you know, I'll just do one piece at a time. If there's any notable updates, of course, I'll share them along the way. And pretty much everything is transferred over. No problems at all. I took some time to clean the radiator for the CPU here to straighten out some fins and get it in optimal working order. So it's nice and clean. So I have, there's three fans. There's the one in the front that blows air in. This one is blowing air out, and this one is blowing air out. Now obviously you want fresh air going across your radiator here. At least that's what they say in the manual for this particular one. That's the best uh, orientation. However, this I think will work better because we have hot air rising up here. We want all the hot air to go out the back. We don't want it blowing out the front at us. So. Uh, I thought adding a fan up here at the top will help get rid of the hot air that, of course, rises. 
uh, to get rid of that and provide a little more cool air for the radiator here. Now this is the case fan that came with the case. The reason I decided to use that one is it has a longer cord on it than the original fan that came with the radiator. This one has such a short cord on it, it only reaches like right over to here. So it wouldn't have been able to reach across to the fan header right here. Anyways, that's my idea with that. So we have one bringing air in, one getting rid of the hot air, and then this one's blowing hot air out as well. We'll see how it works. Obviously not optimal. Give it a try. Anyway, we have the disk drive up here, the Blu-ray. I don't know if it burns them, but it definitely reads them. I have one of the hard drives that he had in the original computer. This is a three terabyte one. I'm going to save the other ones for future projects. We have the graphics card, the one gig, whatever, NVIDIA card, I do believe. And of course, the 500 watt power supply. Um, the reason why the one of the USB ports on the front of the other machine never worked was because one of the pins for the 3.0 USB header is broken. So, of course, only one's going to work, but that's okay. We do have USB 2.0 on the front as well. And here's the old case, as we took a glimpse at. Obviously, there's nothing in here anymore. Uh, you could tell the fans that were used and the, the one that never got used. A lot less dirty, but that's the inside of that. This is a really well-built case, very heavy. But obviously, we have one last thing to put in here. We can't just put windows on that hard drive. We got to use an SSD and we can't, we can't use just some cheap SSD, you know, these are for another project, but we've got to use a high quality one. Now I've been using crucial products for a very long time uh, in my Macs and Windows PCs and everything. And I've always been very happy with their quality and I think it's worth the price. So here is a 500 gig MX 500 drive. I thought it would be the best option here. So we'll put that into the case, and interestingly enough, it goes down there on the other side. So let's move it around. There's the SSD in its new home. Obviously, it's one of the thinner ones, so it has a little bit of play in there. They give you a adapter here for that, but I'm not too concerned about that. It's not going to hurt it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the other side. There we go. Obviously, cable management is absolute zero here because there's not really a gap in the back to place the wires. However, there's not really a need to worry about that because there's no glass panel to make it look nice. Of course, if I was to make one brand new from scratch, that would be a nice thing to have. Um, but here, with all these used components and uh, being an older machine, and I'm not looking for flashy anything, this works out really well. So I try to keep all the cords over here to the side. I think we're ready. I'll check all the connections, but I think we're ready uh, to turn it on. It is now time. Let's see what we get. There's something in there. No, it just sounded like it. Fan or hard drive or something sounds terrible. Well, we had something for a second. Oh, it's going to try to boot Windows off of that hard drive. Well, let's get into the BIOS. Shut down the machine, unplugged the 3 terabyte hard drive, and put a Windows 10 Pro CD in the drive here, and that's what we're booting up now. So we'll try getting Windows 10 on here. While it's doing that, let's take a look at some things I picked up this past week. This thing I didn't pick up this past week, actually, so I'm lying there. I picked this up uh, probably a week or more ago. This was the last fluorescent version they had at Fred Meyer. They replaced these with LED. They look exactly the same, but they don't have the F4T5 bulb in them anymore. And the cover is now opaque, so you can't see anything inside. Obviously, the LED version, I'm sure, is much brighter and lasts a lot longer than the fluorescent version, but I remember these things when I was a kid. I had a handful of these. This one's nice. It actually has the um, DC power adapter at the end there. I don't know if the LED one still had that, but I thought being the last one, since they're going away, I'll pick it up. I'll make a video of it. Let's see. We'll go in a order of oldest to newest, I suppose. 
picked this up last week. It's just a simple Christmas light set, but I like these that are brand new and packaged, especially the ones where the bulbs are spaced really far apart. So I picked this up. They're in great condition, a little messed up there because I pulled it out of the package at the store to ensure that they do work, and indeed they do, or else I wouldn't have picked it up. I love old sets like this. Set that aside. I also picked this up. They had a whole bunch of boxes of these. Obviously, these are LED retrofit bulbs for your C9 Christmas lights. But all the boxes had the incandescent bulbs in them. So obviously, somebody bought the LEDs and then gave the incandescents uh, to the thrift store. But this one still has LEDs in it. In fact, they left the receipt in here, too. So, other than the two incandescent ones here, we have some LED versions. I've always seen these, but they're not exactly cheap. And when I was looking at the person's receipt here, I did notice that they got these on clearance after Christmas was over for a pretty good price. Um, not exactly as cheap as $3, but I think originally this box was $40. They got it for $20. And then here I got it for three. But I thought I'd try them out at least for such a cheap price. It's it's worth a try. So that's cool. And then this week, this is the only bulb I found at the ReStore that was interesting. It's a Slim Jim light. Obviously a piano style bulb with a wonderful etch there on the end. Pick that up for a quarter. I like this old packaging. And there we go, Montgomery Ward. They're selling it for cheaper than what was printed on it. So that's pretty cool. It'll be great for a video. We also have two of the Satco 20 watt warm white circle line bulbs. These are getting hard to find. So when I saw these, I, I had to pick them up because they're just way too hard to find nowadays. You can get them online some places for sure, but in store, nah. I also picked up this set of Christmas lights at the Goodwill. Brand new in box. Uh, this will be great for work because I usually bring in some of my strands. Um, but since I have the house now, I'd like to use them here. So this will be great to use at work to add some nice Christmas ambiance during that time of the year. The guys do like that. And I picked up this little lamp. Now, why in the world would I pick up this little lamp? I don't know. I thought it was interesting. Obviously, this shade is for a bigger size bulb than this, but it's got a really heavy base. And I thought, if anything, if I can't find a candelabra base bulb that I like to put in here, I could put a medium base socket and put uh, a unique bulb in it that fits kind of the era. Um, but the other thing is, is that the shade itself, whatever this material is that's on here, um, reminds me a little bit of my grandma as she had wind chimes that had the same material. And I'm not sure what exactly it is, but it did work as a wind chime and it had the same look to it. Obviously it was in circles and, uh, you know, when it blow in the wind, it'd make a chime, but here it is being used as a lampshade. Uh, so it kind of reminded me of her wind chime she had. Like I said, obviously this bulb's too small and it sits too low. Um, but if I find the right bulb, I think it'd be kind of neat. And it, it was real cheap. I you know, thought I'd pick it up and try it out anyway. So that's some of the things from this past week or two. We're still slowly getting there. Went to lunch, walked around the park, and went to Goodwill with a friend. And this is one of the things I decided to pick up. Obviously, it's an Ikea lamp. You can just tell by the design. Of course, Ikea also has these this style of switch here that you use on a lot of products. Um, it doesn't necessarily say Ikea on it anywhere, but it does have their designer here in the bottom. It was, what do we have here, $7. I'm curious what kind of bulb was inside, so let's find out. It's full of little bugs, no surprise, but it just has a generic Ikea bulb inside, and what a good guess, because it obviously is Ikea. I really enjoy these Ikea lamps. 
any of their simple designs that I've always liked. This one's obviously to light up a wall. This would be perfect for like a Philips Hue bulb to add a splash of color to your wall or ambiance or whatever. I'll clean it up and I'm sure I'll find a home for it. I like any of these accent light type fixtures. As always, I do hope you enjoyed these videos and this one. And also please comment, share, and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching.